Hello and welcome to this video about building Shiny application using the Golem package. You might have heard about Golem if you've listened to this episode from the Shiny Developer series where I talked with Eric about effective Shiny development methods and about building Shiny applications with Golem. In this episode, we talked a lot about the why behind Golem, but not that much about the how. This is what this video is going to be about how to build production-ready Shiny application using Golem. So what is Golem? Golem is a package which has been designed to help you build production-grade Shiny application. The idea is that if you start a project using Golem, you're going to have all the tools you need to build a production-grade Shiny application. In a sense, you can think of it as the use this for Shiny applications. So let's get to it. First of all, it starts with a project. So I'm going to go to New Directory, Package for Shiny App using Golem. And I'm going to call it Webinar Golem. So now I've got a skeleton for building a Golem. The basic idea is that a Shiny App built with Golem is a package. So if you are already familiar with building packages, you are already familiar with this skeleton. Here is the description. You find also the inst, the man, the namespace and the r folder. The only new thing you're going to find is the dev folder. This dev folder contains a series of scripts you're going to use during the development of your application. So let's start. The first file you're going to use is the start.r file. The first function contained in this file is the fill-desk function. The fill-desk function is a function which has been designed to help you fill the description file for your package. So I'm going to put a title to my application. I'm going to change the description. I'm going to put my first name, my last name and my email. If you already have a repo on GitHub, you can use this parameter to set the GitHub repo for your description file. So I'm going to run it. The next function is the set golem options function, which is an important one as it sets a series of global options which are then used by functions inside golem. So it's very important you run it. As you can see, it sets package name, package version, package path and app prod. Then you have a series of functions which are extracted from useVis, which are very common when you are building packages. So if I want to change the MIT license name, I'm going to put my name here. As you can see, it has a license file inside my, f uh, my package. You can, of course, use the other license function from useVis if you wish. Then you've got the function to create a readme, a function to create a code of conduct, a function to use a lifecycle batch, a function to use a news.md file, and a function to use git. So you can create a readme, you can create code of conduct, and you can create the lifecycle batch. I'm going to add the code of conduct in the end. Save it. There it is. Then if you need to use a dataset inside your application, you can run the use data row function from use this with my dataset name. And then it's going to create a, data, a file to create the dataset that you are then going to use inside your Shiny application. The use recommended tests function creates a tests 
folder which contain the skeleton for test that and which has some common tests you can use when doing Shiny applications. The use recommended depths adds a series of dependencies to your packages, so attempt, DT, glue, and HTML tools. If you want to remove the default favicon, which is a golem favicon from your application, you can use the remove favicon function and use favicon function. Note that this, fun this function is able to download a file from the internet and put it um, to the right spot inside your package. So if you have a favicon which is online, you can download it using this function. These two functions create two files in the .r folder, which are golem utils server, which contain a series of functions you can use inside your server function in your application, and utils UI, which has a series of functions of commonly used functions, for example, list to li, which turns a vector from an R vector into an HTML vector. Named to a lead, turned uh, named list into uh, HTML lists. So we've got here a series of functions you can use inside your UI. Now that this is done, you can go to the dev, dev file number two. But before that, I'm going to show you the run dev file. The run dev.r file is the one you're going to use while developing. So you're going to use this function, this file, to set that the app is not in production mode. Detach, detach, all attach, detach every package you have loaded inside your environment. Document and reload runs document from Roxygen and a document from DevTool and reload. And webinar golem run app is going to launch the app. As you can see, I've got a beautiful app with a title. So what does this run app function do? This run app function do what this run app function does do is launching the app with the app server and the app UI, which are defined in the R folder. The app UI contains is a function that contains a tag list with a function called golem add external resources and then fruit page with the title, which is the default when you start your golem project. So <coughs> what is Golem add external resources. It's a function that adds the www folder from system file app www from your package. So you can then use this three letters to refer to CSS and JavaScript and external files you are going to put into the app www folder. We're going to see this in a moment. So App UI defines the UI of your application and App Server defines the server of your application. So as you can see, everything is launched with the run underscore dev dot r script. So what to do now? Now that you've checked, now that you have checked that you have a running application, you can create modules. There is a series of functions that can help you build modules. So the add module function takes a name and what this function does is creating a new file with everything you need to build a new shiny modules. So the idea is that if you need to create a new module, you just have to run this function and you are going to have everything you need. So as you can see, I've created my first module so it creates mod my first module UI and mod my first module server. In order not to forget anything, you have you just have to 
cut and past things. So here I'm going to pass this into the UI and I'm going to pass this into my server. So now I can, can put some things inside my module. So let's say I'm going to put an H2 with a plot. And I'm going to put a plot output with the ID plot. And then I'm going to say output dollar plot and the plot. plot iris. We're going to check that everything is working so I can go back to render and relaunch everything. As you can see I now have a working module in my shiny application. If I want to create a second one I can say my other module so I need to stop my application first. So I've created another module, so let's say h2 have a plot with plot output plot and then I'm gonna say output dollar plot is and the plot plot air quality. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna put this in the UI. So just there. And I'm gonna put my over core module inside my server. Let's now check that everything is working as expected. Okay, so now I have my two modules in the application. What have you got next? So if I go back to my dev.r file, I have a series of functions that I can use to add dependencies every time you need a new package inside your application. So if you need the Thinkar package, you can add it to your package. If you want to create more tests, you can use the use this use test function. So the idea is that if you are building a golem, you are building UI function and server functions. And as you are building it, as you are building your application as a package, you can split your server logic your from your UI logic and inside your server you can split between things that need a reactive context so function that needs a reactive con context from function that don't. So function that don't need a reactive context they can be built as a classic function and these classic functions can can then be tested as any other function inside the package. So. I'm going to create a test for my app. Um, let's say that in my first module, I had a function which said um, x equal random num. So now I've got this random num function, I can create a new a new function that does that. So and then num is a function that returns let's say from one to five that returns one number from one to five. And I'm going to use it there for 
splitting a little bit my plot. So random number just returns me a number. So this is a function that doesn't need any reactive context. Actually, it just need uh, it can be run anywhere. So I can test it like any other function. And the idea is that now I have splitted my business logic. So my business logic is the function are the functions that uh, don't need a reactive context from my application logic. So here I can create a simple test for. This function. Then I can say expect is random number numeric. Okay, so let's now check that our application is still working. Here it is. Stop it. So here is a little something for adding a browser button. Uh, so this is something you can use inside your Shiny application when you are developing. So if you create inside your UI, so you just launch this browser button functions, then you go back to your UI and just copy this code there and then observe event inside your server. And then I'm going to relaunch my application. As we can see, nothing has changed, but the idea is that if you go to your JavaScript console there and you copy this code, there is no browser button there. If I click on it, it opens my application. So this is a little hack you can use uh, while developing. If you don't want the browser to show the browser button to show on your application, but you still want to have access to this button, you can use this little trick to do that. So I'm going to stop. Then, to build a production ready Shiny app, you need to customize a little bit your application. So, you need to create external script, uh, external JavaScript files, uh, external JavaScript handlers, and external CSS files. So here I'm going to say add JS, JS handler. So a JS handler is a function that a JavaScript function that you can call from your server side with uh, with Shiny. So let's say I'm going to create a function that's saying alert with a message, and then I'm just going to do alert message. This function is going to be called alert and it can be uh, it can be called from the server side in Shiny. I'm going to show you how this works. So my function is called alert. It's a JavaScript function that takes an argument called message. So if I go back to my app UI, let's say I'm going to remove this. I'm going to call alert. If I go back to my input browser, that I can now call alert. I can do golem invoke JS with the alert function and I'm with a message yay. Let's now relaunch our app. If I click on that button, it doesn't work because uh, 
Oh, sure. Because I've forgotten to add it into the header. So when you add a new JavaScript file, you've got the code here to add it to your application. So you go back to app UI and then you go to column add external resources and you just paste the code from this message. So let's try again. And now it works. So as you can see, I now have a button here, which is linked to an observe event in my application. So I've got an action button called alert. An observe event here, so it observes input alerts and it when this button is pressed, you invoke the JavaScript function called alert. Alert is a function, is a JavaScript function which takes a message parameter and that does alert message in JavaScript. So this is a shiny handler, JavaScript handler, and if you want to do CSS, same thing, so add a CSS file. And no, I'm not going to do the same mistake again. I'm going to copy and paste directly the code where it needs to be. So here I'm going to link to the custom CSS and let's say I'm going to do h2 and I'm going to say, I don't know, font size, uh, color red. Let's now restart. As you can see, no, my CSS is there. So this is how you can put JavaScript and CSS file inside your Golem applications. So simply using the add.js add, add file add.js handler or add CSS file, you can create JavaScript and CSS files which are easy to insert inside your Golem as long as you don't forget to add them inside Golem add external resources. Then we go back to standard package development. So building a vignette with use vignettes and building it. If you want to use GitHub, Travis or AppVeyo, you can use it there. So to sum up, adding new module with the add module function, and then you've got everything you need to copy and paste back to your UI and your server functions. If you want to add external elements, so add JS files or add CSS files, you've got the functions there, which are created where they need to be. So in inst app www. And then one, once this function is, when this application is ready, you can go to deploy and deploy as a series of functions that you can use to put your application into production. So if you first, of course, you need to check it. So you need to run DevTool test. So here my test is an integer. It's not an integer. You can test your application the standard way. So as I said, you need to write tests for your backend functions. And inside this test golem recommended, this test uh, looks if, um, if you are able to launch the application. So this little process is creating a new, so it's launching a new application. It slips for, uh, number of seconds and it uh, it tests if the function is running so this is what it does if you've got a, a shiny application that takes a long time to run you can put this syslib to 10 to 15 to 20 seconds as you wish so this 
launches the application, this sleeps for a number of seconds and this tests if the process is still alive. So it tests if the application is still running. So if the, the application is able to launch and then it kills the process. And then you've got three function to create files to deploy to RStudio Connect, Shiny App, IO, or Shiny Server. So what this function, these functions do is creating an app.r function at the root of your package. So here it creates this app.r, which which you can use to send this to connect. So here, if you want to publish, you can publish there. So as you connect, shiny app IO, shiny server, if you want to create a generic docker file, you've got add docker file, or if you want to create a docker file for shiny proxy or for Heroku, you also got some functions to do that. So, the last thing I wanted to show is the run app function. So the run app function is the function which is used. Uh, so when your package is built, uh, installed and loaded, you can use the run app function to launch your application. And this function contains uh, another function called with golem options. So the idea is that it allows you to pass parameters to your application. So for example, if you want to create uh, parameters called A, which contain uh, 12, you can say that I'm gonna put some option inside Golem, and let's say a B, which contain 13, so A and B equal 13. So here, I create parameters to my application, A and B, which default to 12 and 13. And now when I'm using the run up function from my package, I can pass parameters to this function. And once you've set these parameters inside your UI or inside your server, you can get them with the, let's say, I'm going to put the print, so print get golem options. So if I'm, I'm putting get golem options A, I'm going to get the A option I have set inside my run app. So let's try this. So oh, forgotten to put this column. Get column options. As you can see, I've got 12 here, so inside my server. And if I change to A equal 15, so I have, and I've got in my server 15 from my option. Of course, it can be you can get this anywhere inside your application. So if you want to put this inside a module, you can put this inside a module, let's say. For example, I'm gonna say here is get column options um, A. And I'm gonna do a run up with one
and I'm going to do a with two. So the idea is that with this function, so get column options and with the with golem options, with these two functions, you are able to have a package with a function inside it that launches, launches an application and this application can take parameters. So depending on where you want to build on when or things like that, you can deploy custom-made Shiny application with uh, parameters. So that's it for uh, the basics of using Golem. If you want to know more, you can go to, let's close all these tabs, uh, to thinker open slash Golem. And you can also read this online book about building big shiny apps. And of course, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at colin at thinker.fr or you can reach me on, uh, on Twitter if you want to know more, if you want to discuss about Golem. And if ever you have any question or any idea about uh, Golem, anything you any bug you can find, any features you would like to have implemented in Golem, feel free to go to our GitHub account and to open an issue. Thanks for watching.